sticking with DC, you know, back when they made the announcements of all the stuff that was happening and they're going to be doing with DC, one of the things that James Gunn mentioned was that, listen, me and Peter Safran, we went, we sat down with Ben, we explained where everything was going, he explained his situation to us, and we would love for him to direct a DC movie, it's just going to be a matter of finding the right project and all that kind of stuff. Gave people like me, who is a self-admitted, complete Ben Affleck fanboy, uh, Ben Affleck's Batman is my favorite Batman. I desperately wanted to see him direct a Batman film. I really did badly. But it made me like really excited for the future that at some point we could see Ben Affleck come in and, and actually direct a film for DC. Well, not a snowball's chance in hell, according to Ben Affleck. There is no way he's directing a film for DC. And more than that, there's no way you're going to see him do comic book stuff again either. There's a really, really good uh, interview that The Hollywood Reporter has done with Ben Affleck where all the headlines you see are coming from. And, and I thought it was important to read out some of the excerpts from that to really help us understand the mindset of Ben Affleck, where he's at, and why he's like, uh, no, I'm out, never again. Uh, this is what, these are some of the quotes from Ben Affleck in that interview. And we'll go over to my screen here. He says this, but I was going to direct a Batman and Justice League made me go, I'm out. I never want to do any of this again. I'm not suited. That was the worst experience I've ever seen in a business which is full of some shitty experiences. He goes on to say, and I started to drink too much. I was back at the hotel in London. It was either that, drinking too much, or jump out the window. And I just thought, this isn't the life I want. My kids aren't here. I'm miserable. You want to go to work and find something interesting to hang on to rather than, get this, rather than just wearing a rubber suit and most of it, you're just standing against the computer screen going, if this nuclear waste gets loose, well, that's fine. I don't want to condescend to that or put it down, but I got to a point where I found it creatively not satisfying. Also, just you're sweaty and exhausted. And I thought, I don't want to participate in this in any way. And I don't want to squander any more of my time of which I have a limited amount. So Ben, uh, we'll get to the rest there in a second. So Ben is basically saying that, you know, the, the, the experience of making these films was miserable. Um, and then he talked a little bit about like what happened after Zack Snyder also left, but it, it was clear, like he talks about how, you know, all of a sudden Joss Whedon came in and magically he was supposed to fix everything and it just didn't and all that kind of stuff. But he goes on, he just talks about, listen, I, this whole thing wasn't for me. I don't want to stand in a rubber suit going if the nuclear waste gets out. It, like, goes, this isn't for me. This isn't the life I want, all that kind of stuff. Well, after kind of laying that part out, the interviewer then asked, Ben Affleck this. They said, so if DC came to you now and said, do you want to direct something, which is right in line with what James Gunn was talking about earlier, nah, Ben shot it down. He said this, I would not direct something for the Gun DC. Absolutely not. I have nothing against James Gunn. Nice guy. He's going to do a great job. I just wouldn't want to go in and direct in the way they're going to do that. I'm not interested in that. The Justice League experience the fact that those stories became somewhat repetitive to me and less interesting. Yeah, I did finally figure out how to play Batman and I nailed it in the flash for the five minutes I'm in there. It's really great, <laughs> which I, okay, first of all, you understand how much I love Ben Affleck. I really like Ben Affleck a lot. Um, but yeah, he just says, look, not interested. I'm not going there. I'm not going to do it. And, and that one quote of his, I'm out, I'm never doing this again. So, I mean, look, I'm not going to lie to you. It, abs it absolutely breaks my heart because I, more than most people, I have been dying to see. I mean, I, I pretty much came to peace that he probably wasn't going to direct a Batman movie. But to still see him enter that world, and I think he's one of the best directors out there today. I, th I think he's top 15 best directors in the world right now. I really do. And I think his directorial resume backs that up. I can't wait to see Air, the Michael Jordan uh, shoe story. I think, I think it's going to be awesome. But I also, the when he describes it like that, when he describes it, let's go back to my screen for, for just a second. 
Just then, uh, what did he say? He said, um, you want to go to work and find something interesting to hang on to rather than just wearing a rubber suit. And most of you are just standing against a computer screen going, if this nuclear waste gets out, well, blah, blah. And then it, it, it just talked about how the same, the movies just became repetitive. He didn't find anything creative, interesting in it and all that kind of stuff. And then he's talking about it. Like he was so miserable. He started drinking a bunch and you know how it just kind of ruined him. I get it. I get it. Your life comes first. And if he's realized, I remember we talked a story a few years ago about how Matt Damon even kind of told Affleck at some point, you got to get out of this stuff. And you know what? It was even the Hollywood Reporter that put, I don't know if you saw the story, Rob, like last week, the Hollywood Reporter basically put out this thing about uh, why Ben Affleck should never go back to comic book movies. And it, it kind of sounds like maybe he's heeded that. So look, does it completely bum me out? The notion of not seeing Ben Affleck direct a DC movie? Absolutely does. Completely bums me out. But do I understand it? Yes. And and by the way, I think he did a very good job of expressing how miserable he was and expressing why he does not want to do this sort of thing again while also being careful to step in and say, hey, I'm not putting down the comic book genre. I'm not putting that down. I'm not trying to be condescending. It's just not for me. And I think he did a really good job of expressing both. So I, as a fan of his, came away not feeling at all like he was disrespecting the types of movies I love to watch, but at the same time doing a really good job of really expressing himself as to why you're not going to see him getting involved in stuff like this again. I, I thought, as always, Ben Affleck was super articulate. I love the way he put it, even though it leaves me being very sad. Hey, guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, Manscaped. Breaking news, Manscaped now sells beard products. That's right, they are once again revolutionizing men's grooming with the brand new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. Now you can finally use Manscaped products to make your drapes match your carpet by going to manscaped.com and using the code Campia for 20% off and free shipping. It all starts with the Beard Hedger. This thing is a juggernaut of fixing faces. First off, this cordless trimmer has a rotary wheel that gives you 20 hair cutting lengths, all with one guard. So no more messy drawers full of extra add-ons. You also get the Beard Shampoo and Conditioner. Because guys, you gotta remember that all of your hair is different. Your beard hair is more coarse and easier to damage than the hair on your head. Next, the kit has Manscaped's Beard Oil. The oil relieves dryness both on the beard and the skin beneath. You then cap it off with the Beard Balm that shapes, styles, moisturizes, and tames for a sculpted look. The Pro Beard Kit also comes with three special gifts, a beard brush, comb, and scissors to ensure your beard is ready to impress. With a nice beard, your face is perfectly groomed, right? Wrong. You need to keep an eye out for those tough to trim ear and nose hairs. The brand new Weed Whacker 2.0 offers improved blades and skin safe technology with a no tugging guarantee. It's never been so painless to mind your manholes. And now that you have your face looking great, you must try Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0 for the full body grooming experience. And good news, the Performance Package 4.0 now comes with the Weed Whacker 2.0 and all of the other below the waist grooming products that Manscaped is is known for. Your significant other will be delighted to see you covering all bases, if you know what I mean. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code CAMPIA at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code CAMPIA. Manscaped Beard Hedger, one stroke, one guard, 20 lengths. Anyway, Rob, you read the, uh, you heard the, the comments, you read the article. You know, it, it kind of sucks, but how do you feel about it? Well, you know, it's, it, I think it goes back to this people, maybe people won't like me saying this, but you know, when filmmakers come out and talk about comic book movies, sort of not being real cinema, right? I mean, they're comic book movies are a very specific kind of film and we love them. And I grew up with comic books and all of that. But at the end of the day, there's only so many stories and so many things that you can address within the genre of comic book films, the way they're currently structured. And when you think about the movies that Ben Affleck makes, I mean, he won an Oscar for writing Good Will Hunting. And that is a movie that has profound resonance on many different levels. And I think when it comes to what cinema can do, once you've done your time making comic book movies, and I think if you're a director and a writer and an actor like Ben Affleck is, 
And he looks at his kids. He wants to make movies and tell mm-hmm. stories that have the kind of resonance that a movie like Goodwill Hunting does. And comic book movies don't really allow for that kind of thing, at least not in the way that a movie like that does. And I understand. I mean, when you are making these big effects laden comic book films, as an actor and a storyteller, there is a lot of standing around waiting for the technical aspects to happen. And then the story that you're telling really doesn't allow you to emote. I keep thinking about the conversation that like um, Robin Williams had with Matt Damon. You know, just that conversation when they're sitting on a bench. It's not your fault. You don't get a lot of that in a comic book movie. And I think what Ben Affleck wants to do is, in the time he's got left, he wants to make meaningful movies. And I'm not saying comic book movies aren't meaningful, but he wants to go back and make movies like Argo, which won Best Picture, or Goodwill Hunting, or any number of um, Changing Lanes, the movie that you always think oh, that he's God, good I in. Oh, God, I love that movie. You know, I think that he's got, if you look at his filmography, he's got a really interesting filmography. And he's already been in the biggest, I mean, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, and Justice League, especially when you see Zack Snyder's cut, it doesn't get bigger than those movies. And he's done it. You know, and he's proud of his Batman character. He got to say goodbye in The Flash. And I think he's right. I think that he's made those movies and he can continue to make them, but he wants to do something else. By the way, we did, we never really touched on that one part where, I mean, I think there's been, nobody expected Ben Affleck to have a massive role in Flash. But the one kind of throwaway line in that whole thing was he said, yeah, I, hey, I nailed Batman and Flash all of five minutes that I'm in it. So it sounds like it is like a very, very small part. Right, although he could be using five minutes sort of euphemistically. Or sure, it could be, be three, could be nine. But the way, yeah, the way he played the character, I mean, that makes me more excited to see the Flash because, you know, I think everybody is talking about the Flash and has been saying it's so good because it deals with issues that traditional comic book movies don't get into. Like the idea, I wanted to keep this universe here because my mom is still here. You know, and that's when comic book movies have more resonance. Um, And I I think that that I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see The Flash. I can't wait to see what Ben Affleck does in his career. And it seems like he's got his head really screwed on straight. And I'm I'm excited to hopefully see the next thing he directs. Yeah. Which is Air. Which is Air. And I I think the, the trailer for Air with him and Matt Damon looks fantastic. And can you imagine for him being a sports fan from Boston? That's got that movie's got to have been a dream project for Dude, him. I was reading a, 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 an interview with Benny saying, "Listen, I he he knows Michael Jordan. They play some poker together." And he said Jordan is an absolute hero of his. So he he definitely talked to Michael Jordan. Yeah, I don't think Michael Jordan appears in the movie or anything like that, but I think this movie looks great and I cannot wait to Can't see Can't wait to see Ben get back in the director's chair and whatever he's going to do next. Anyway, guys, question is for you. How do you feel about this? Uh, Maybe you're like me and you're a huge Ben Affleck fan and you were really looking forward to seeing him direct something in DC. Maybe you're not at all. Maybe you're bummed out like me. Maybe you don't understand. Maybe you're angry about this. I don't know. Whatever you guys think and however you guys feel, jump on down to the comments section below and let us know your thoughts.